On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're doing stuff to the mirror. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We're back, Martin. Yes, the mirror is still in two halves. Well, there's two mirrors. This mirror, the JDM mirror, which is now a lovely half cut, of which we have both halves of the car, um, is still sitting here, but there's a few things that need to happen to it before that can get slapped into the Australian delivered mirror that will be the mirror that's the actual mirror. Martin, let's have a quick talk about some of the issues we have, namely the big shaft. That's the shaft that makes this car all-wheel drive. Australian yes. car's not all-wheel drive, and the floor pan in the back of the mirror is not appropriate for an all-wheel drive thing. It doesn't accommodate it. It, it doesn't have the channel. It doesn't, but luckily... The channel's in there. Luckily, we have the back half, so the idea is that everything externally is the same. The floor is different. So we need to unpick the floor and put that floor in the other car, which is a fairly common conversion if you're going all-wheel drive, like if you have a Mirage or a Lancer and you want to turn into a little Evo or something. It's the same job. So yeah, that's what has to happen in this. I've never done it before, it's pretty wild, uh, but it needs to happen, so we have to firstly like check the condition of this and, and then start picking it to pieces. Being Japanese, salted roads, snow, all that kind of stuff, there's gonna be rust. There's gonna be rust. I don't know how bad the rust is yet. I haven't turned it over because I've been too scared, but today's the day. Usually when you use a half cut, it's the front half, but this time for us, it's more like a good mullet. Business up front and party in the rear, because this swap is about to get a bit more wild. I got told by Robert Import Monster to not have too high hopes, but he said it looks repairable. That's all I know. <laughs> well, this will define what's going to happen for the rest of our build, isn't it? Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Well, that's less than ideal. <laughs> Finger size oh, hole. Two fingers. Three. I got. I can get three fingers you in got there, three mate. Three fingers in there. Um, it's not beautiful, but we can't exactly just get another one. So I think this is just what we're going to have to work with. At Impro least for ultimate balance, I can get three fingers in down there as it's well. Funny that it rusted right there, isn't it? On the spring seats. That can all be repaired, though. I have welder and I have metal. How's it going over? Going all out with it? Yep. <laughs> this car has been pummeled by years of parking in mounds of snow and driving on icy roads, and probably doing some mad all-wheel drive skids as well. So these are the tools we're going to need. First and foremost, we're going to need a fair share of personal protection equipment. Uh, it's going to be noisy and more so, it's going to make a lot of dust, sparks and other rubbish that we don't want in our eyeballs. Uh, and then we're going to be using a grinder. We're also going to be using these cool twist knot wire cut brushes. And the idea with this is that it's a really good way of stripping sort of loose, rusty bits and also the old paint off the shell. And it attaches directly to a grinder like that. These are pretty, pretty nasty things, so you've got to be really careful with them. Gloves is a good idea as well. And basically that will help us grind off any of the old stuff that we need to get to so we can separate the panels. And once everything's grinded off, the way we're actually going to be separating them is by using these special spot weld drill bits. So this basically has a little point on the front of it here that is just enough to get through the spot weld. And when that drills through what the robots did in Japan, the two panels should just go plonk, literally gets attached into the drill. We had no idea how many of those we were going to need, so we bought like there's 50 or something, isn't there? There's a lot of spots. There, yeah, there's a lot of them. So at this point, we just grind and drill. We make mess. And just keep fapping until the two flaps come apart. Until we have a floor separated from the rest of the car. Let's do it. We haven't done this before, ever, and it all working out relies on the fact the factory is going to have to do the bare minimum necessary to accommodate the different drive lines. In this case, that means the car should be identical from the rear seats forward. If that is the case, there'll be reference points where both floors are the same and we can stitch them back together. Because the floor section may have been the first panel produced, we essentially have to peel the rind off the watermelon using spot weld drill bits and grinders. We should then end up with the most basic floor panel, which can then be grafted into the Australian car. Oops. Hey. 
Sorry about that. You break the bit? No, I just went all the way through. This bit's popped, which is cool. That's the first one that's done that. Is it? Yeah. Once the spot welds are drilled out, a chisel can help encourage the panels to pop apart. We can then grind away rust, scale and seam sealer to uncover more spot welds which are otherwise hidden. Next, we can use an air hacksaw to cut away the thinnest parts of the floor which are no longer needed. He doesn't kind of just pop? No, it's, it's either still stitched under here. Yep. Or there's some seam sealer or something sort of in the way. Yep. I reckon we can, if there's any way we can pop that off, we'll be ahead. Hey, there it goes. Oh, look at that. It's through. This is how much room there is in a mirror. That's the width of the body. It's tiny. It's a bit awkward when you're not like <laughs> next to each other, but you're face to face. Yeah. Super intimate. Um, here it is, Martin. This is the magic piece that is required for all-wheel drive awesomeness. It's awesome because we have a reference point now. Like that is the same on both cards. Everything will line up from that point back. Yeah. Uh, and this we don't need, so we'll have to pick out a bit more of this rail. We're essentially picking this whole panel off the rail. Yeah. And um, is this all one piece or is this separate pieces? Um, it should be mostly one piece, but I mean, there's some rust issues there, obviously, that we have to like, we're going to have to weld new metal in. We have to fix it properly. Yeah. Um, and so some of these bits will get replaced. I think the next step might actually be to flip it over and then do the ones inside the arches. Yeah. Because that will give us, we can sort of pick the stuff we don't need off that. So epic, man. Yeah, it's a little big job. This is next level. Yeah, it's good. Part of the challenge of unpicking spot welds is being able to see them at all. By grinding off the surrounding paint and seam sealer, it makes spotting them a lot easier. That's pretty much everything I think we can do underneath. Yep. Yeah, if we flip it over and we can start to unpick the wheel arches, it'll be up. Ready to go. It feels so dirty treating a car like this. Yeah, it really does. Isn't it amazing how light it is? It's crazy. With no running gear or anything in it. We previously spoke about all the differences between the uh, Australian version of this and the Japanese version. And things like this just don't exist. So it's really important that we retain all these parts and don't break them because these will eventually find their way into our What'll our new one be called, Marty? Is it JDM? Is it ADM? Does anyone care? I have absolutely no idea. But we need that or I can't wash my mad back window. Does the Australian one have a rear wiper on it? I think it does, yeah. Just no way of spraying on it? Um, I don't know, actually. I assume it has to have something. It's never worked. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of spot welds holding this car together. And aside from the odd stint in a smash repairer, it's rare that you'd ever need to actually separate the panels. Most of the welds are covered in seam sealer or painted over to prevent corrosion. Being that we're working on the inside of the car, appearance is not as important as it will be covered up again anyway. Dude, getting this into the other car is going to be hectic. I reckon we call in some reinforcements. Our mate Benny, otherwise known as Mechanical Stick, is no stranger to half cuts and has come to give us a hand with his reciprocating saw. Thanks for coming down, Benny. That's alright, man. This is a fairly novel approach compared to what we've been uh, we've been doing. Yeah, we just got to just cut away the bits we don't need really, and then the fine details in the bits that we actually do need. So. We don't have to spend hours unpicking every single seam like yep. you've already done. <laughs> but we just, yeah, basically just cut away this, the stuff we don't need to save time. And then once we get into the finer seams is where it actually matters. So. We have to unpick the other car too, right? Of course, yeah. Okay. But what we're not doing is instead of cutting away the body, we'll actually cut the floor out and just hack all that away and then neatly trim that off as we're, like, as we're ready. So. so this half cut mm -hmm. has a date with that saw. Sure does. And you. And we need to check the other car to make sure everything's going to be in the right spot. Yeah, so we'll actually make a few reference brackets from the floor to the body before we cut it up too much. 
Probably just do a couple of seat belt mounts and some seat mounts. I'm gonna back the other mirror in. Yeah, can and we, we can do that and then we can measure it and check it and make sure it's all the same. Matt? When I used to eat watermelon, I used to cut the watermelon off the rind. And then, now what I've started doing is washing, like cutting the rind off the watermelon. Do you know what I'm talking about, man? What? I used to cut the watermelon off the rind, but yeah. now if you cut the rind off the watermelon, you actually get more fruit. But then don't, don't you have a blubbery watermelony mess that has no structure? No. Someone will understand me. Wait a minute. My point I'm trying to make. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make. Are we cutting the bit we don't need off? Are we cutting the rind off and keeping the fruit? Or are we cutting the bit we do need out? We're cutting the rind off the fruit. You're quite right. We're going, we're going your Thank style you. of watermelon. Thank you. But with the other car, we have to cut rindy bits the off. The fruit off. Yeah, the fruit off and then... And then because we attach this fruit to the other one's the rind. Other but this one's just docking. with heaps of fruit and then there'll be no rind. Yeah. Awesome. And here he is, everyone. Fruit Ninja. We thought it might be a good idea to measure the Aussie mirror to make sure they're actually the same. If you're trying this at home, we'd suggest measuring before you send the cut on an 8,000 kilometre boat ride. Oh, mirror floor mats, dude. Just polishes it off, doesn't it? It does. I'm looking forward to putting those in the, in the finished car. Hey, Martin. Yeah. Do you know uh, what song this is? I know that you're starting with you and you're going to make a change for once in your life. Yes. It's going to feel real good. It's going to make a difference. It's going to feel something. And then I don't know the rest of it. Because I know the chorus. Do you know what the chorus is? What's that, Martin? Man in the mirror! Woo! We've got ourselves some metal because pop just won't do. And we're going to weld up some brackets to help locate the new floor when it goes into its new home. The rear seat belt mount holes are the same on both cars. So we'll be able to hang the new floor in the Aussie mirror once we pull it to pieces. reason that mechanical stickers made these cool tabs is that we are going to join this to this and the idea is that when you cut the rest of the floor out and you unbolt this it's got a reference point because these are in the exact same spot on the Australian car which means we can actually lift our floor in bolt it on and then we know it's in the exact right place for when we start to weld it. Pretty good example of what an icy, snowy and salty road will do to a little car with tiny thin sheet metal that's just pressed into layers, which makes it quite strong, but it's still no match for rust. That is properly rusted right through. Luckily the underside of the car isn't quite this bad, there's one or two spots that are pretty, pretty dire, but we don't need any of this because all this comes from our original one, it's literally just the suspension pickup points and a few other areas like where the fuel tank bolts in that we do need so we can bin this. Now, if there was 500 more examples of this rolling around Australia, then we might go and find another one and chop that up. But the truth is they just don't exist, so we do have to repair. And it's pretty amazing what is possible as far as rust repairs are concerned. If you can cut out the rust and put a new section in and make sure it's done properly, it will be plenty strong. It's pretty common in places that have lots of snow. Hello, Canada. Uh, so we've got to push forward and use as much of this as we can. Rather than rust treat the entire rear cut, we're going to cut the floor down to the bare minimum we need to make it work. So I think when we're going to separate this, we'll actually cut probably 20 mil to the junk side of the seam. Yep. Take all the body off that we don't actually need. And then we can get a lot better access to all the seams and take it off neatly. And the spot welds too, right? Yeah, yeah, Because a lot definitely. of these are from inside the, inside the wheel. Yeah, they're out. sort of inside a box section that you can't get to because the car is assembled in stages and, and they don't, put a whole floor pan in the car. Yeah. Like they actually build the external onto the onto the floor layer pan, by, whereas we're sort of layer. trying to go backwards. Yeah, okay. So I think for this in this instance we'll actually cut the body away like and get it to a state where the factory would have had it assembled in that sort of sequence. Cool. 
and then we'll have to do the reverse when we do the mirror we'll cut the floor out and then basically grind to the seam and then draw the spot welds out that way cue the grinding shots and upbeat music by this stage we've truly realized that this project has grown way bigger in complexity than we'd ever realized and while a lot of people might just look at this car and see a 300 dollars pile of rusty scrap for us, this project is so much more. It has genuine sentimental value, so it's worth going the extra mile to bring it back to life. What's crazy is that the only reason that we need to do all of this is because someone 25 years ago decided that the full-spec all-wheel drive turbo version of this car was not a viable option for the Australian market, so we got the lower spec version instead. One of the reasons that you can't import a JDM Mira is that it is so much better equipped than the Australian model that it would have damaged the local market, so it wasn't available. That's straight. Panel fixed. With only a few more pieces of sheet metal to strip, we're marking the spot welds we can see with a marker to make them easier to drill out. Later, loser. <laughs> Sick. Keep going, it's working. Why didn't we do that 10 minutes ago? When in doubt, get the biggest hammer out. I'm just gonna flog this for a sec. Yuck. We finally have the floor out of the half cut. It's been completely picked apart by the three of us and now it's going to need a little bit of work and a little bit of love before it's going to be ready to install into the Australian mirror. So next we have to find somewhere to help us tidy it up. We're headed to Ready Strip, who use a chemical stripping process to remove paint, powder coating, grease, scale and importantly for us, rust. It doesn't attack the metal itself, meaning we should be left with a totally clean rear floor ready for rust repairs. This process is often used on classic cars and it's not uncommon to dip an entire body shell because what you're left with is metal and nothing else. The process is a multi-phase cleaning system using alkaline electrolytic immersion. And for this particular part, it's going to involve a number of days in a variety of chemical solutions to get the panel back to bare metal. To get the part in and out of the solutions, it's strapped to a cage using nylon rope, which isn't affected by the chemicals, and then attached to a crane. The first step is a hot caustic-based solution, where the car will spend three full days. This process can be repeated as many times as necessary to remove dirt, grime, sound deadener, stone guard, and other material. It's then blasted clean between each process to remove any loose material and prepare it for the next stage. Our panel will spend six full days in a bath that will further strip the paint and break down the glues, bonding the underbody coating to the metal. So we're going to pull the body shell out of the tub, giant tub of acid, and then we're going to wash it all down, see that, make sure everything's got stripped off, look, see how the rust is looking, and potentially slap it back in. Next up, after a clean, the panel will make its way into a mild acidic solution that will loosen the rust, which is then blasted away by high pressure water. So it's about to go for another swim. This time it's had a little bit of phosphorus sprayed on it as well. It needs to have a little bit more stripping done and then it's dipped in a big bath that neutralizes all of it. We wash that out, flame dry it and we're done, but it's still probably got another couple of days. This has now been over a week that it's been here for, and it'll probably another one or two trips here before it's actually finished and ready to take home. Five days later, and now two weeks into the entire process, the panel has come out of its second wash in acid to be cleaned thoroughly. 
phosphorus is then sprayed onto the panel and like magic, it reverses the surface rust you can already see as a yellow haze that started appearing just minutes after being pulled from the bath. The last bath that we'll get is a neutralising solution, which has current passing through it that gets rid of any remaining oxides in the metal. It's then high pressure washed again for the last time and then warmed up with a flame to help chase any water out of the seams and hidden spots. Paint grip is the final step, which seals the part using chemical paint bonding material. It also has phosphoric acid to minimise the effects of surface rust, meaning the panel can stay in this bare form until it's installed and we're ready to paint. This has been a huge process, but we're motivated by remembering what this little car is capable of and what one day it might be doing again. <laughs>